as the uh, host said, that I actually study uh, aging and how to slow it down at UC Berkeley, LBNL, and the Center for Research and Education on Aging, which is a joint uh, center at both institutions. So my talk is uh, Aging Research and Silicon Valley's Role in Advancing Our Understanding of the Aging Process. So before we look at the future, let's uh, look at the, uh, the past for some guidance. I'm not sure if many of you know this, but Abraham Lincoln spoke at the uh, Cooper Union in 1860, uh, outlining his presidency. And uh, at the time, he was 53 years old, and this is what he looked like as a 53-year-old, and he certainly looks much older. So I'm going to stick to 1860 a little bit and obviously move forward and uh, talk about what's going on in Silicon Valley. But I think it's nice just from a perspective to see where we've come from and where we are and where we're going. So um, as uh, Thomas Hobbes said uh, about 1860 or so, life was nasty, brutish, and short. I'm pretty fortunate in that I don't think my life is nasty, brutish, and I hopefully it will not be short. I'm sure that most of us leave live very good lives and lives that I think should be extended. So again, I think we've seen a lot of these. Uh, I'll just go through this really quickly. Um, so for the most part of human history, um, average lifespan was approximately uh, 38 years old. And just during the last 100 years or so, we've done a lot of work scientifically and technologically to, um, to extend that. Um, again, going back to 1860, um, many of the causes of death uh, have been more or less taken care of by now. Uh, obviously, infections, industrial accidents, uh, being thrown up by your horse, war, lack of uh, medical care, malnutrition, and, um, and childbirth. Actually, a statistic I found while I was doing my research is that I, I find this unbelievable, but um, uh, only 50% of children lived uh, past the age of 16. So life was, again, very harsh, brutish, and short. Um, again, um, the periodic table had not been discovered, no antibiotics, hormones had not been discovered. This is this part I really like. Surgeons did not wash their hands prior to surgery, nor did they use anesthetic. The journal Nature had not yet been published, nor the journal Science. So let's talk about technology. So technology is the application of knowledge for practical ends. Um, and technology has allowed us to live uh, these 80-year uh, lifespans that most of us are familiar with and also uh, present my talk using an Apple computer that was uh, uh, designed in Silicon Valley. Um, so why is technology an important factor in understanding the aging process and extending our lives? Um, to answer that question, we need to understand what aging is. And I think we've probably uh, seen some uh, interesting presentations on what the interpretation of aging is, but this is my interpretation. Um, so aging is the progressive dysregulation and failure of our biological systems. So aging is complex, yes, and this is just a very, very uh, bridge diagram and uh, obviously a lot of pieces are missing, um, but I think it, it shows um, where technology can come, uh, can come and help us out understanding this process. So when I get new students in my lab, I always tell them they have to memorize this chart and all the interactions and they're going to have to uh, write an exam uh, in, a, in about a week's time in order to reproduce this, uh, this chart. And of course, I'm just kidding because this is pretty much uh, almost impossible for you to memorize and reproduce. But fortunately, we have things called computers that do this effortlessly. Um, so a large amount of information um, is related to the aging process. And yes, that is very true. And here's some examples. So this is just one of the conferences I've uh, gone to last year. And um, it's called FASEB. And uh, those boards you see uh, in the background are poster boards. So uh, the posters have scientific information about the work that's being done by the scientists. And you can see there's numerous, numerous posters here. And they're actually changed, um, I think, three or four times a day. And the conference was about four days long. So there were literally thousands of posters on, on display. And here's just one of them. And this is a, a, few, of my, uh, a few of my students. So going back to the information uh, issue, um, so if you look at, for example, growth hormone, which I think was mentioned in a previous talk, uh, if you look at PubMed, there are over 120,000 articles on just growth hormone. And then if you look at estrogen, 200,000 articles on estrogen, uh, leptin, IGF-1 insulin, and so on and so forth. There's, there's a lot of data. And again, we're very fortunate in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of very good computer folks out there. And I think a lot of a lot of work will be done in gathering all this information and assimilating it 
Because I think one of the problems that we have is I think a lot of us are still in that regression mode. We try to kind of zero in on a problem and try to fix it. But I think aging is a very, very kind of broad type of problem. I think Aubrey said that if you ask 10 biologists what aging is, you're going to get 10 answers. My, my take on that is if you add, ask uh, 10 researchers, you're going to get 11 answers because some people are not sure which way to go. Um, so number of papers uh, published on aging has increased exponentially since 1925. Uh, we're up to about uh, 20,000 per year now, and that curve is, uh, is definitely going to keep on going in, in this direction. And with the advent of artificial intelligence, I think um, things are going to change radically in the next uh, few years. So here are some of the companies that are working on, the, on this problem uh, in many ways, shapes, and forms. Um, and um, in institutions, uh, CREA is the one I'm, uh, I'm affiliated with, and obviously SENS is uh, where Aubrey uh, is affiliated with, along with Ajax and a few other companies that are uh, in institutions as well. So um, Silicon Valley is working on one of the greatest questions uh, ever asked, and uh, how can we stop aging, basically, is that question. Um, so what are, what are the technologies that will help us understand and slow down the aging process? Well, there's many of them, and uh, some of them will be surprising. Uh, and one of them I'm going to mention is actually um, the bandwidth of the Internet um, is going to play an important role in basically allowing us to transfer information back and forth. CRISPR-Cas9, I'm sure some of you have heard the gene editing software and, and protocol that was developed at UC Berkeley. Um, virtual reality. Um, I, on my desk, have a 60-inch 4K screen as my computer monitor. And I want much more. I want to see as much data as I can. So I really want VR to, to mature so I can see all this data and manipulate it uh, as it was, uh, with respect to aging, quantum computing, uh, nanotechnology, supercomputing, artificial intelligence, and so on. So who, uh, who are working on um, stopping aging? And uh, what are the institutions? What are the technologies uh, that are involved? So um, I don't know if you know, but Google's very interested in this problem. Uh, and Time Magazine says so, so I believe them. Uh, they've been spun off a company called Calico, um, and they're, they're doing some very interesting work. A lot of it's uh, a bit, uh, um, they're, they're keeping uh, a lot of it under wraps, so they don't share a lot with, uh, with the general public. But here are some aging research centers in the Bay Area. There's CREA, there's SENS, there's the Buck Institute, um, Stanford's uh, center, and UCSF's universities, Berkeley, UCSF, Stanford, University of Santa Cruz, and uh, UC Davis. Um, stem cell technologies are being worked on by uh, Ajax and uh, Biotime and uh, many other companies in the uh, Silicon Valley area. Um, High-speed internet, again, Cisco, Juniper, Brocade, Extreme. Again, uh, we can't do science without uh, fast information interchange, and so those are going to play a major factor in the future. Supercomputing, Intel, regular players here. Um, a little bit about uh, the technology as it stands today. So uh, the fastest computer today runs at uh, 187 petaflops, and that's today. So I, I presume in about 20 years, our cell phones will be running that. And the implications of that are extraordinary because uh, as far as AI is concerned and many other things as well. So um, virtual reality, as I mentioned, um, the ability to visualize vast amounts of information is going to be very important in understanding the aging process because it's very complex. There's a lot of data. So having the ability to visualize lots of data is going to be important. Quantum computing, uh, processing these massive data sets, again, uh, high throughput DNA sequencing for sequencing the genomes of different organisms and comparing them. Again, the companies in the Silicon Valley, Illumina, Agilent, and uh, Pacific Biosystems uh, Sciences, sorry. Um, and by the way, I just thought I'd point out uh, the slide here that the cost of uh, DNA sequencing has dramatically dropped recently. And uh, by 2025, they're saying that the cost of, uh, of processing or sequencing an animal's genome will de be down to like $10. Uh, gene editing, uh, Jennifer Doudna, strangely left the last three letters of her name, DNA. <laughs> And yes, she's at, uh, at, at Berkeley, um, where I am. Uh, bioprinting, I'm not sure how many people have heard of that, but uh, it's something that we're doing in our lab and for doing replacement body parts using your own cells. So as you know, uh, if you need a transplant, you're, you're going to receive an organ from another donor, and there's implications as far as your immune system rejecting that organ and so on. But if you're printing organs from your own cells, clearly your immune system will be just fine with that because your own cells and there will be no rejection. Artificial intelligence, we've been hearing a lot of that uh, lately, and uh, Silicon Valley is hell-bent on, on basically passing the Turing test. 
and the implications for aging are vast because you can imagine um, PubMed is the main database uh, of our scientific information on aging and biology and so on. But if you could imagine an AI let loose on um, uh, PubMed and assimilating all that information uh, in real time, because as scientists or as human beings, I mean, I can only read so many papers per day, but uh, AI could read millions per day. So the implications of that are, are profound. And if you listen to Ray Kurzweil, he's predicting that by 2045, the singularity will appear. And I'll, I won't go into that, but I, I highly recommend, if you don't know what the singularity is, you, you, you uh, do some reading about it. Um, robotic surgery, um, not great news for uh, human surgeons, but if you want um, a, a surgery to be done uh, uh, cost-effectively and precisely, uh, again, there, there, there's a company uh, in the Bay Area called um, Verb Surgical that's, that's doing this. And also, uh, there are some groups at, at Berkeley working on this as well. Cryonics, I'll talk about that in a minute. So in 25 to 30 years, the companies and institutions uh, in the Silicon Valley area will play a very significant role in slowing down the aging process. Uh, and by uh, 2045, I'm hoping, or predicting, that a human aging will be stopped. And a few, uh, I'll kind of explain that in a little bit by the next point. So, if you consider um, AI will have reached the singularity point prior to 2045, um, it's difficult to imagine the impact on human aging if, if the super intelligent singularity basically is unleashed on all this data, what it could come up with. Sequencing of the human genome will cost uh, $1 and take one minute by 2045. Zeta flop computing will be commonplace. Bioprinting of human organs will be commonplace. Robotic surgery. Uh, and people revive from chronic suspension. So um, none of our speakers has touched upon the fact that, well, it's going to take 25 to 30 years to solve this aging problem, but what if you're 75 right now? What, what, what is your alternative? What, what, can, what can be done for you? How can you bridge this technological gap between now and 25 to 30 years from now? What if you die before the aforementioned technologies become available? Does Silicon Valley have an answer to solve this problem? And in fact, uh, it does. Um, there is, in fact, a lifeboat that has been um, operating in Silicon Valley, and uh, it's called um, Cryonics. And what, what it is, basically, is uh, if you happen to pass away prior to all of us who are working on this aging problem, um, prior to us coming up with the solution, then the solution for you or that person who passed away is to basically be frozen cryogenically. And this technology, by the way, is uh, used commonly uh, in medical science to, um, to store human embryos, uh, fertilized eggs, sperm, cord blood, stem cells. So this is something that uses existing technology to basically bridge a technological gap um, that currently exists. Because I think if you ask the most optimistic person, uh, I think they'll probably, the, 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 it'll take at least 25 to 30 years and perhaps longer to, um, to do serious interventions on aging. And like I said, if uh, you don't have to have that much time left on your clock, then um, chronics is pretty much your only option, unless you consider option number one and option number two. And option number one has been around for about 100,000 years. I, I did some research and apparently the oldest buried human dates back to about 100,000 years. And apparently, cremation has been going on for the last 20,000 years, whereas chronics is a relatively new process um, that is pretty much the only game in town. And so as far as aging is concerned, I think it's a pretty important factor because, once again, if you're 75 years old, I'm not sure we have very many answers for you right now except for basically waiting uh, long enough for the technology to catch up to, uh, to the point where it can do something about the process and obviously uh, unfreeze you and reboot you. So in summary, um, you know, thanks to technology that are being developed in Silicon Valley and elsewhere, there are many people alive today that may live a very, very long time. Thank you.